not this split. Like, it's not really been the style of BLG at all. Uh, the Callisto has really been the only aggressive AD carry that they've been bringing out, aside from uh, the Evolution as well. But either way, it's going to be a Wukong first lock in here for view with the Poppy Band off of the table. So Wei Wei likely to go towards something like a Diego. Yeah, uh, don't necessarily have to pick it up now. You know, uh, could just leave it to late to have some options. Looks like BLG oh, just going to take no. Lucian and then I would assume take the Nami here. I think the problem with leaving Nami until three is that it gives you less flexibility. But if there's something they want to prioritize, they could pick it up now. Um, but yeah, I think this, you know, we often see people be like, oh, we've picked. The, they're not going to pick Nami by itself. We can leave the Nami till three. But then if WE picks something, like let's say Demon picked the Gwen, like how he's supposed to respond to it with, uh, you know, Bin's Jax, you have to take the Nami. So WE might just take the Aphelios in response. Could pair it with Renata or Lulu. I think those are both solid pairings into the Lucian Nami. Yeah. I, I will say, I like the Doggo and Crisp just beat the Lucian Nami that was a 1-2 lock-in or maybe it was a maybe it was two, a 2-3 three. Three lock-in but uh, they they beat this that was on the red side and now they just go look we're going to play this matchup and we're going to show you how to play this 2v2 uh, the Aphelios and the Renata this is what you talked about before very very good at denying the, the aggressive combos down in the bottom side but now third pick jungle could be available or trying to get yourself a good solo lane lock-in then go for bands yeah i love this i feel like because in this position yes we can focus bands towards the jungler but uh you're able to target ban shanks out here for anything that could cause problems with blanc blanc obviously fantastic pick i got had a really good performance on it against omg uh and then yeah i mean one thing with Renata as well is she did have a base health nerfed a bit to tone her down which is probably one of the reasons we haven't seen it quite so frequently so this is still being a solid lane into lucianami but definitely a little bit more vulnerable now than before. A BLG do as expected, bad away the Lissandra, which obviously we just saw last game, but very good into the LeBlanc. Yeah, it certainly is. So, uh, arguably the best matchup, right? We've seen it so many times over the years when that, the, the Lissandra, you can ult yourself, you can ult the LeBlanc, you can W her W, like feels like there are so many ways in which it's a good matchup. Uh, the RE taken off the board as well, trying to remove some of the roam ability from Shanks. His Silas has been removed. I feel like BLG kind of want Shanks to play the Swain again. That's what it feels like to me. With When you think about Shanks champion pool, you think of the Silas and the Swain realistically. So we'll have to see where Shanks is going to go in that mid lane. But up against Icon's LeBlanc, when this is a signature champion for Icon and he's playing with the form that he has been for the last week or two, it's a scary matchup to go into. Absolutely is. I mean, you, you couldn't theory pick like the Azir, but uh, definitely some vulnerabilities. Uh, the Lulonk is one of the few champions that can actually challenge him and find opportunities to pick him as much as Azir will have that prio. BLG, you know, even with a balance towards the jungle, we'll just pick a vibe and be pretty happy. Uh, definitely something that will make life hard for Shing on this Aphelios. And I feel like, you know, we often see the Ari uh, Vi as a combo. Uh, but LeBlanc Vi is similar in the fact that when Vi dives deep to get on someone, LeBlanc will be there. Like, can easily keep up. Yeah. LeBlanc will be able to follow up on a Vi engage. That goes without saying, I'm pretty sure. As the Rise will be locked in here for Shanks. It's something he's played plenty of times. It's not a champion that gets played much in the meta right now. Shanks only playing it once this split, but, you know, previous splits has been a big Rise player. The Theora has made it through the draft. We usually see this band. I didn't notice it slipped through the bands. It's a monstrous pick in the right hands and Demon gonna lock that in blind and instantly. The Jax is hovered within a split second from Chris. Oh, I mean, I I, I prefer this to blind in the Gwen when you know Jax is gonna come face. through. But his face. I, <laughs> he's so red. Oh, would he? Oh, I mean, Oh, he locks it in. He just wants to dumpster Demon early. And I feel like BLG's composition is that in a nutshell. This is a comp where you are trying to get an early lead and crush the enemy team. I feel like last game, they happened to get an early lead from good play, but the comp did require one. But here, they will be trying to do some slapping around and taking WE down as quick as possible. I will say, BLG, this is a, a very very aggressive composition and 
very much not the style that we're used to seeing from BLG, but we've seen more over the last week or two. This is what we wanted coming in today, and I feel like they've cranked it up a notch for this final game, or they they hope final game against WE. But WE have certainly got scaling on their side. They've got disengaged with this Renata. Maybe it's possible for WE to get a game in the series. Orcs, I feel like this draft is almost a little... I don't know, disrespectful? That doesn't feel like quite the right word, but like, just, it oozes confidence, right, from BLG. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the ones where if you start to make mistakes, you don't have that insurance, right? In the last composition, Jax is naturally going to outscale Gwen in the side lane. Zeri and Lulu are going to naturally outscale everything in pretty much every game, just because that's how broken they are. Uh, even if things didn't go as well for BLG, I, I did, you know... I, there was never a point where I was like, oh, you know, what happens if they make a mistake? They lose a fight. They lose a dragon. Still felt like they had that scale on the back. This is not the case in this one. Like, sure, they have a lot of tools to go ham and get ahead. But if they start to make mistakes, have errors come through, we really could see a comeback in this one. There is the potential for it to happen. Yeah, there certainly is. I mean, if BLG go too aggro, if they flip it, if they try and go for too much, could all go with a little bit pear-shaped, and as you say, the scaling, certainly on the side of WE and Renekton. Not going to do much in the late game against a split-pushing Fiora. Look at this from WE, though. The level Demon's one Demon's gone ghost. Here. Demon's gone ghost as well for, like... We see we see a lot more ghosts recently. Extra power in team fights, right? Because once you get a reset, you can proc it down. But I think that's honestly, like, in the longer lane, just to run down the Renekton. Like, if you pop, pop your ultimate, pop ghost, Renekton's dashes aren't going to outvalue the movement speed in a long lane, right? But does make you very vulnerable in the laning phase, uh, I will say. Obviously, yeah. Fiora does have her dash, but if we start to see attention from Icon a way, way up there, Demon uh, may, may find himself in an uncomfortable situation, we'll say. That's a very conservative way to word that. Um... <laughs> yeah, Demon in a whole heap of trouble if BLG decide to focus on that top side. And I'm going to be honest, I expect BLG to try to focus on that top side with Bin on this Renekton. Uh, Maybe. Taking a bit of a trade early. Should Maybe the Gambit. Sorry, oh, I was going to say, maybe the gambit is that he's like, okay, well, BLG are aggressive everywhere. So maybe if they're aggressive bot lane, they won't be aggressive top lane. And that's, that's the that's the play. It's like VLD have too many lanes to play through, so hopefully they forget about top. Ah, yeah. Maybe some of their players don't know how League of Legends works. It's, you know, it's a, <laughs> an interesting gambit. We'll see if it pays off for them. I'm not quite convinced, but, you know, I, who am I to say? I am but a mere shouty man. These guys are professional players. Um... Ben hitting the level two, Demon respecting it, realizing he cannot go anywhere near this croc. I mean, honestly, usually Fjord is pretty good in a Renekton level one because you can just proc your Q, proc the vitals. Renekton kind of needs level three in a lot of matchups to take control. So honestly, if I'm surprised that Bin is uh, oh, bullying no. out so hard. Yeah, you have to be... This matchup is so much about Fiora's W. If you W like a full Fury uh, Renekton W with his stun... Uh, you can really cause issues for the next turn. If you mistime your W, good luck. <laughs> Go next. <laughs> yeah, the Ruthless Predator. I mean, that's true in so many matchups, right? That the Ruthless Predator really is the crux of it for a Necton. If he can find a good stun, it does massive damage. It also breaks shields, remember? So, so many matchups down to whether or not he can find that good W. Uh, and Fiora, no exception to that rule. Up in the top side. Uh, I can be pushed in by Shanks, though, early on here. Shanks going to try and go for an early reset, grab himself that tier. He's playing the Ryzen, does have TP, so we'll be able to return to that top side with him. <laughs> Already trying to put so much pressure down. He wants to get onto the tower here. Obviously, not going to do much damage this early on, but just, you know, every little helps. Just get a bit of damage down while he can. Starting it early. It is interesting with seeing the Ryzen. I hear a lot of people talk about after the, the changes to, like, pots and everything, that they thought there'd be more Ryzen, like, because you can... Really easily push the wave in, reset, uh, and cause quite a bit of pressure in the early game, and then obviously scale up quite well. They thought with their like the reduced sustain, it would cause problems. Like obviously in this situation, Shanks has already reset, come back with the tier, and Icon is trying to get the reset off there, but the wave will be pushed in, and they give Shanks a free move. And obviously you can even see Icon all cropped in potions, uh, sacks been already, but 
haven't really seen it too much but we'll get it on display this game and the rise could be a pivotal piece to disrupt the aggression from blg you have to see the rise roaming and trying to find windows with that realm orb if you see a dive being set up top or bot and you can stop that it can make a big difference certainly can one shot left on his caliber so you expect him to use the Q there. Demon starting to feel the wrath of this Renekton. You said the level three is really the moment where he'll start to come alive. Been struggling to like crash these waves though. I feel like a lot of this game we've seen Demon just underneath the turret. So it's difficult for Bin to really exact revenge. Yeah, obviously, ideally you want to be able to crash the wave, have it bounce back. And then when it's in front of your turret, you can set up ganks or you can just trade onto Demon. Whereas now... It's like every time he goes for a trade, he's risking taking a tower hit and then obviously just losing the trade off the back of that. Uh, so, does have to be a bit careful. Uh -oh. And now, oh, he has on. seen you, but we'll just get a ward down here because that one's going to time out in a second. So, I guess he just wants to make sure he isn't getting ganged. I was going to go for the Gromp, honestly. I thought he was just going to go for a 1v1 on view. It wouldn't, that would be passed. a bin move. I wouldn't have put it past him. It would have. It certainly would have. Uh, he's just going to return to the top lane, though. And the TP comes out from Demon. You can see he's already got a 10 CS lead for himself up on that top side. I will say, Doggo and Crisp on this Lucian army, it's not going as hot as you would have hoped, considering they very confidently locked that in in response to the Lucian army last game from WE. Uh, so far in the early game, really able to win out these trades. Yeah, and now Finn, he hasn't reset yet, and Demon has a Sheen, so... Uh, yeah, the Fiora pretty strong here, but the ult from Bin will obviously oh, prevent, prevent any real all in coming in just because Bin gets his ultimate first. So should see him reset soon though and uh, pick up some items before obviously <laughs> Demon start to find opportunities. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, should be able to get back in, grab some items, but actually deciding to go back up to the top lane, at least for the time being. Wait, wait is in the area, so. Maybe trying to bait it, or maybe just trying to crash this wave. He does have his TP available, so it's not like he'd lose much going for a recall, but wanting to get absolutely every ounce of value he can out of that lane. It's going to be a play on towards the bottom side here. Shanks and View moving over. A dive onto Doggo and Crisp. A dive onto this Lucian army, but they've got the damage here. Bailout isn't going to be enough. Crisp surviving here one for one so far. Views clone falls, but WE are on the wrong side of the tower. And here's Icon. Here they go. Flash over from Weiwei to get onto Shing. Icon with another. Kadaya locked on up. And BLG dominate WE. And you know what this is? This is an unforced error. WE didn't need to make that play. And yet they, were, they saw it. They were like, we have the confidence to go for it. As soon as Icon was there, you kind of knew it was going to go bad. But when Weiwei turns up as well absolute decimation and now sure there's a 20 cs deficit in the bot lane but doggo just picked up two kills so we're gonna replay realm Wolf comes in icon is ready he reads this so well and then they instantly turn onto the wukong the reset doesn't come in uh despite the bailout because the burst and then they get a chance to sort of buy some time we can't really get out of this situation they have to try and walk through icon but Weiwei shows up and yeah uh ooh. Uh-oh, Demon is in trouble. One more auto. Good little repost there, but here comes Crisp to turn Why the play. Can he find the bubble? Yes, he can. Bin with the kill onto Demon. I feel like there probably would have been a solo kill. Bin's probably annoyed, honestly, that Crisp came and uh, took his yeah. credit. I mean, in fairness, he get, doesn't get the solo kill stat, but Chris gets some more gold and probably is yeah. running Treasure Hunter to close to the Imperial Mandate. But also, he, his flash kind of meant that demon might have been able to get away on that one uh so do secure the kill expect to see this uh blade Rune king renekton that we typically see blade Rune king it's like a tank mythic really strong but you can also just delay the tank mythic and build uh you know things like kempunk chainsaw just lots of furore ad and you can see demon really struggling to hold up to him yeah I will say the one silver lining on the side of WE right now is the bottom lane, right? Where you do have a big CS deficit in favor of Shing. Doggo obviously got a couple of kills early on, so the gold difference won't be significant, but um, the XP deficit could favor WE slightly. You know, I'm really looking for silver linings at this point. Uh, the other one hey. being in the mid lane with Shanks having a kill, having a little CS lead as well. Here's silver lining, Joe. The enemy comp doesn't massively outscale them like in game one. So there's still some hope into the later stage of the game. But it is looking rough at the moment. Uh, and 
you know this top this bot matchup is starting to get a little bit of an advantage for doggo and chris but i think the critical thing will be when those one items hit when it's gale force for doggo when it is the uh mandate for nami that's where they can really start to cause problems and find momentum and it kind of plays yeah. like lucian nami kind of plays for like picks like if someone steps up wrong you just like dash in gale force combo into calling and it basically just 100 zeros any champ in the game at that point Desperately wants to proc those vitals, but Bin will not let him. And Demon actually took a tower shot for that one as well. Uh, it's not looking pretty up at the top side. It's a 20 CS lead for Bin, who really wants to defend that control ward, but won't be able to. Demon doing a good job to clear that one away. Uh, won't be able to get the other ward, though. And Bin, this is what we were talking about when we mentioned the, the position in the lane for the minion wave. This is more like it for Bin. He can force Demon into a really uncomfortable position. You can see Demon is just going to reset. He knows this is going to be frozen, and he knows he can't walk up. Yeah, I do think it should just bounce back with the cannon eventually, so it'll be a limited amount of time. Uh, but he is obviously going to miss a decent amount of CS, but he's just going to take the recall, pick up a longsword, get healthy again, uh, and then go back up to see what he can do. But he's already down a level of the back of this, and... You know, those five kills that came in now got a 2,000 gold lead for BLG. It's just the pace they do want to be setting, but uh, we'll see what more they, they can do because WE have managed to pick up the Herald at least, so that is actually something massive they've denied away from BLG in terms of setting the pace of the game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Look at this wave that Bin is stacking up as well. I don't think anyone is going to be moving up here to help him go for a dive onto Demon, but even still... Yeah, like Bin might just be able to get some plates off of the back <laughs> yeah. of this massive wave. I mean, I was going to say, I feel like Bin, Bin might be tempted to look for one himself, but he <laughs> yeah. has to respect the fact there's a, a rise in the enemy team. And you can see with Shanks just walking out of lane mid, yeah. he did play a little bit more cautiously there. And also, like, it's Fiora anyway. So with Repost in play, it's always a bit dicey to go for a dive in that kind of situation. But the pressure he's putting on the top lane does mean BLG can quite comfortably just start this Drake off for themselves. Chris and Weiwei are going to be working on that one as Doggo moves over to put some DPS into the situation. And I think this is one of the biggest changes about Dragon is, first off, obviously, we are seeing them uh, picked up a little bit later. Obviously, the Herald first pickup of the game uh, was BU this time. But it's also more a matter of, like, you need your team to move over. We don't really see Jungle soloing Drake in the same way anymore. You need to have your AD carry moving over and getting some DPS back. Yeah, or bare minimum, just like cover. Like you can do it and take a while to do it, which obviously isn't yeah. ideal because you're wasting so much time. But you definitely don't want to risk it without the support from your team. Oh, engage coming in. A Gale Force and a Flash forced by that Tidal Wave. I think you'll take that trade every single day of the week here for BLG. Icon getting a bit of damage done. Oh, and he oh, forces a TP. Shanks a little too trigger happy with that TP up here. Yeah, now they're trying to make the push with the Herald. But, I mean, realistically, BLG are here and forced to defend oh. this. This pre-team 14 no minutes. No available for Doggo or Chris. I mean, they should get the charge, but they won't get a power. Yeah, the cast to synergy off the charts today. <laughs> it's, <weird. laughs> it's such a good job oh. of reading each other's intonation. Wait, what? You, Demon's got a solo kill on Bin in the meantime? Oh, my lord, man. We're going to get a replay of that in a second. I am certain... But he essentially, died, didn't he? yeah, he, died, he, didn't he? <laughs> he absolutely we all know did. What happened. Oh man! <laughs> Look, I don't want to say we called that this would happen, but BLG with a hyper aggressive composition going a little too deep. Uh, can't say I'm massively surprised. Good stun. Uh, bit of damage. Yeah, I think one thing is he popped his ult quite late. Like I remember Doinby did like a one shot uh, the other day on Rakuten, and he like. Popped his ult a lot early in the combo to buffer it. And Bin was a little bit late on that. I'm not sure if it would have been enough to kill. But uh, yeah, regardless, he went for that because Demon's repost was on cooldown. Uh, and But it was like four seconds away, five seconds away when he stunned him. And like even so, even without the fact that he had the repost, still able to survive long enough to turn it around. And that isn't good because, you know, we talked about how strong the Renekton is early. How this play the Rune King Spike really big as well. But uh, Fiora will become problematic, especially if you just give her free gold. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be totally honest, dogs. I saw this early composition from BLG. And I just... This is just not the BLG that I know, you know? And, like, I love teams that play this style. I would love for BLG to be able to win this game. But 
It's not a style that they're particularly used to. Demon wants to go for the 1v1 here, chasing Finn down. Has the ghost, remember, it's on cooldown this time, but wants these fights. That's three vitals. Finn protects his fourth, and here comes Weiwei. Demon, I hope you've got the repost. Just lunges away here, trying to dodge the queue. Yeah, there hadn't been a W here, so I had to be a bit cautious. Uh, but we... Oh, wait. Yeah, way going on Bin. That is not a fight that he wins by himself. Flash out from Bin here. Is there enough healing on the team? Tidal Wave comes on out. And it's going to be enough uh, to get him away. Yeah, just able to survive there. But full force coming out here. So WWE set up for the second Herald. And Bin can TP back in. But he doesn't have Flash. doesn't have uh, Icon. Oh, I don't think that was the... Uh, the dash for poke that Icon thought it was. <laughs> he just wanted a little bit of damage there, but a bit off more than he could chew. In the meantime, Doggo uh, does get a tower in the mid lane. He's taking more damage than he's delivering in both of these trades. But yeah, Doggo just get the mid lane tower, so that's actually pretty big on the back of this. Able to pick that one up uh, and get a decent influx of gold. And then they will move over to the second hell to secure that one. In does TP in, hit, has just hit level 11, but again, just like, feels like they're losing. Oh, oh. my God. Doggo wants the kills. Oh, my days. That was so close to both of them going down. Doggo absolutely robbed there, honestly. Can't believe he gets neither of them in the end. As Demon will find himself a tower in the bottom side. He's 20 CS down, but with a tower taken with that kill in his pocket, he's starting to close the gap between the top laners. Yeah, it's starting to become a problem. But honestly, I feel like the Lucian Army, you know, you know me, Joe. You know, I love talking about item spikes. And you can look in that inventory when he went for that play. He had the Gale Force, the Dick, the Nami had the Mandate. As really where they start to pop off. And you can just do that. You just dash on someone and basically one hit them. Um, obviously didn't follow through on the play. Didn't want to overcommit. But uh, yeah, Doggo is super scary now. Especially this first strike that we've started to see on Lucian. Means you're even burst here. And you know, even the fact that he didn't get the kill there. He'll have gotten a ton of gold just from proccing it. Yeah, true with the first strike. You're not wrong. Uh, Doggo, a rich man in this one. You can see a bounty over his head with the 2-0 scoreline as well. Drake coming up here, and BLG complete control of the bomb side of the map. You can see Icon and Weiwei already over the situation and going to start this Drake off immediately. Uh, Crisp and Doggo can move on over to help out as well. And I like that we've seen a little bit more uh, caution from Doggo this game. You know, still being aggressive, still trying to make plays. Not diving in 1v5 so far this game. I feel like either his teammates or the coach will talk to him after the last one, but like, look, chill out. And we'll see if that continues to be how it, it gets set up. Now, that's, second Herald comes that's in. Some mixed messages, though, man. You can't tell your player to chill out and then lock this draft in. True. Like, Maybe you're just like, uh, okay, look, if you're going to play aggro, we're all going to play aggro. No one gets to play aggro alone. We're a team. We've got to work together. Uh, and BLG will just take that tier one with the second Herald. Also, the dragon. It's going to be a Hextech Soul, uh, which is pretty big. Get like Hextech Soul super strong. Uh, and I think this is one of the things when you have a comp like this, security dragons can be super important to having a soul win con sooner rather than later. Oh, I got again. <laughs> He's not <laughs> Will he these. get a positive poke trade? That is the question. Uh, so far, it's not looking good on it. As he will finish the ward at very least. Second Drake did go down. And uh, we kind of reset once more. I will say, BLG. I'm a little cautious that this early comp is not snowballing that hard. They do have a 3,000 gold lead. Don't get me wrong. They definitely have a big lead for themselves. But it's not like this is a great siege comp or anything like this. Drakes are really going to be their win condition. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, this comp does spike hard in the mid game. That's what you're going to be playing around, right? Those mid game dragon team fights. But WE have, I mean, this is one of the things with the fact that dragons are stronger. So BLG get more power from each dragon they take. But because the first dragon is so much later... The, uh, WE still have, you know, nine minutes before that soul fight, even if they don't contest the next one. Now, Demon, they're looking for this. Yeah, Riposte ain't going to save you here. Does get a good Riposte, does try and escape, but Icon finishes the job off. I mean, 4v1. There's only so much that can be yeah. expected of a player here. It's going to be a tower taken down by the two solo laners. And a bonus wave taxed by Icon there as well. An attempted answer in the mid lane here from the side of WE, but... The wave cleared by Doggo. And now BLG might put their eyes towards this mid lane instead. They're all pressuring. They're all moving up. Pressure on this top back. tier too as well. Look at the speed at which they're moving across the map here to try and take some objectives. Yeah, I don't think they'll be able to quite pressure this mid tier too. But it's just like, you know, they move over mid to stop the play. They loop back. They make sure the wave crashes. 
get a little bit damaged the tower but also pick up those jungle camps which i think is something that you know we don't often think about too much but like sweeping through the enemy jungle taking away a few camps is a decent amount of golden experience denied and obviously pocketed by the team who aggresses so just making sure they're getting everything off this play and we gets nothing and now we're talking about how that goalie was about three thousand has pushed up to four thousand five hundred off the back of that play yeah big big swing in favor of blg and you know I wasn't super confident on them with this composition, but it is still looking good. It is still looking like they should be winning this one. It's a big opportunity in the mid lane here. Kadaya counts half. Same for Shink. Demon blocking a lot of the damage with his repass. As you see, Finn pressuring in the bottom side while all this goes on. Weiwei trying to get over to the rest of his team with the hex gates as well to continue this pressure. Had the rest of the team been in a better spot, maybe that's a potential kill. Maybe that's a potential dive, honestly, from the side of PLG. I do think BLG still have to be concerned because they have a lot of upfront burst. They're very good at taking out targets, but like if they start to dive, they start to like overcommit to fights. That's where WE can answer back, right? Especially if they start to trade kills with a bailout. So just looking for these bursty like kind of picks, poke downs uh, can be quite powerful. We even see the rapid fire cannon for Doggo. So when he does dash in, the extra range to land the burst down now. I can't just chunk out Demon, but they're not really going to find anything more bot, I would think. And you see that in the mid lane, they're still trying to pressure this tier two, but they will just walk away from it. It did get chunked out and they obviously apply that pressure, but a minute 15 until that next dragon, they're going to go for the resets now. They're going to be playing for this one. And I feel like WE kind of know this might be the one they have to contest. Because uh, if you leave it until it gets the soul, that's when it gets really scary, but there's still 5,000 oh gold down. Oh my god. Look at items. He just finished a prowler's floor on the protected. Okay. Finn ain't messing about. Shing in trouble here as Icon has to blink back out of the play. And then damage coming down. Oh, knock up onto Shanks. The bubble doesn't quite connect, though. That's the sort of Renekton build I want to see, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah. There are these tank mythics, Gore Drinker. This is the one shot build. Like, I am going to prowler's floor through you, stun you, and literally, be, by the time the stun is over, you are dead. Uh, so, I hope we're going to see that in the next fight. Obviously, not as good in the side lane against the Fiora, but BLG are kind of baiting them in to look for a play here. Oh, Icon Overwall does manage to get away with his life. I feel like Shing is going to press tab here and just go deeply. Like, that is a scary <laughs> reductor. Oh, and to have to there's be no against. exhaust as well on the side of WE. Oh, WE want to make a play onto Doggo here. The bubble onto two, though. Icon with big damage, and Doggo survives. In goes way, way across the plate as well. Demon trying to chase Doggo down. They've taken out the AD carry. WE finding two for themselves and potentially finding more. Problem is, though, WE, as much as they get the trade up and kills, they're all so low in HP. I don't think they can really extend this further. You see if Bin just opts to start up the dragon. I think he will. Uh, like, you can base run in there with the hex gates? No, I don't think he's going to be there in time. I think this is gone. So, yes, WB get the advantage in kills, but BLG get the dragon, and that's really what they were playing for. And a tier 2 tower in the mid lane as well. So just a cheeky bonus on top. So Doggo actually had flash available here. Uh, opting not to go yeah. just to flash up the wall and start. But I just find it crazy that we get... So dash, cleanse, flash, dash, and he still just gets chased down by this Fiora and taken out. Power of Ghost right in those long exchanges. And obviously, we do see the Fiora go down instantly. The amount of damage that was done in return was really the problem there for WE. Uh, and three dragons. I remember the Hextech Soul, 9% attack speed, 9 ability haste. Obviously, not every champion is going to benefit from both those stats, like the Renekton, the Vi. The Lucian very much will. The gold value of a Hextech Dragon is 2,325 across like all five members, which is kind of crazy. And BLG it's now have bad, that in the it? pocket. They have the Mountain Soul. I mean, sorry, Mountain Dragon. And it's four minutes until that soul and WE are in a rough spot. Man, Hextech Dragon makes that old dragon that gave you 190 gold look uh, pretty pitiful. But then I guess that's inflation for you. That 190 gold back then, not worth as much these days. <laughs> Uh, or worth more, I guess, these days. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one to see. BLG on the cusp of that sort of four minutes away from it. And just dominating. Like, it's a 5,000 gold lead for them. 
I wasn't really convinced whether or not they could pull off this hyper-aggressive composition, but they're looking pretty good. And while they haven't had a perfect game so far, they're trying to finish things off. Demon stunned up after the play. Look at the damage out from Bin here as the Realm Walk comes in onto the Renekton. He ain't tanky thanks to that build, and it's a kill for Shing. I love this proactivity of WE with the Realm Warps. 5v4 here. BLG still want to go for the play. They still want to go for this fight. Culling does nothing, though. Knock up onto Crisp as well. And WE find two. They're looking for three. This is the moment. An unofficial triple comes through for Shing as Icon now trying to tether, trying to back away. But Byron's up. And WE have found three. I mean, they should go for it. This is the window back in the game. BLG massively overstepped. Not only does Bane get caught out, but then the rest of the team trying to take a 4v5. Oh, Icon. Oh, he just lives. No flash from Shanks. Finishes the kill. Doggo alone on the map right now. Bin just respawning. Crisp about to come back up, but they're going to take a long old while to get over here. Luckily, there are hex gates, so it's a little bit quicker. Uh, Bin has forgotten. No, they've just decided not to test this. They're not they're testing. They're not contesting. And with this Baron, the goalie, it was 5,000. They're now 1,000 apart. And that's just after taking the Baron. They have the opportunity, obviously, to try and take structures. But in my mind, you close the goal difference. You have the comp that outscales, scales. And here, I've been had his Talos caught up. I think he just tried to one-shot Demon because there's no way you're getting out once the Realm Wolf comes through. Maybe he didn't expect as many people. But he goes down. And then, PLG, you're 4v5. This was so unnecessary. wide and crisp here and just overzealous right at the end of the day they thought that they could make yes. a big play you're against renata like you know what's hilarious you don't get that, to make plays in that situation is that doggo was standing so far back there and we were talking about like how funny it was in the previous game he was super aggressive when everyone else wasn't and this time he's like nah you're on your own dude you can you can go and handle that one and look like blg still have gold lead doggo is just finished in fitty edge they're still strong but uh I feel like WE are now in the best position they've been so far. It's only going to get worse. They continue to push the goal lead, and they're able to deny that soul. They certainly have the scaling. Finn gets a tier 2 tower on the opposite side of the map while this is all going on. You can see, though, Demon pushing in the bottom side. Should be able to look for a tier 2 tower. Icon trying to find a flank here. This is getting a little saucy from the side of BLG. They want to force something. Doggo moving forwards. He's low on mana, though. Just needs to be cautious. Cycle tries to clear the way. Engage from view. Doggo, the target, flashes out. Keeps himself alive. Way, way now. Going to be next on the chopping block. Shanks goes forward, but takes a massive chunk here. And Icon over the wall. Threatening a re-engage. WE struggling to maintain presence in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, a bare minimum, though, they do force them away. But, like, if we look at the bot lane, Demon has hit the point, right? <laughs> Where Fiora is such a problem for this Renekton. Prowler's Claw is not going to help you in that 1v1 realistically. And now it's 40 seconds until the Dragon. I think BLG, despite the fact that, like, obviously WE have gained a lot of ground, you still have to fight this. You have to try and gamble for the soul. Because if WE deny and add five minutes to the game... I think they just they just win off the back of that. In fact, BLG want Elder as soon as possible so they can try and win off that because they, they are really starting to struggle in these team fights. And when WE are clumped up together, it's so hard to approach. BLG have a short range composition into a comp that handles short range champs very well. Yeah. Ooh, icon very close there. It's getting chunked out. Drake about to spawn. BLG need this. Drake, this is crucial for them. Calling use. Try and force WE away here. But it's quite a big cooldown for them. Demon trading on to Doggo. But Doggo managing to trade it back pretty effectively. Shing. Massive chunk from Icon there. BLG trying to play this composition despite its short range. Kind of like a poke comp, honestly. I mean, that's how they have to do it. Poke and burst is what they have. If they get locked into a 5v5 when everyone's full, like WE just have the edge and they've sustained up a bit. WE are trying to get position. Oh, well, Icon looking again. Damage onto View. Once again, they're trying to focus out this jungle and they're trying to find picks. View goes in. Great dash from Doggo, though. Keeps himself alive. Demon on the top side of the play here. Doggo has to be cautious. Good knockups there. It's going to be a cleanse coming out from Doggo as well. Still surviving as Bin flashes out of the back side of the play. Way, way in the middle of everyone. Alongside Icon. Trading. Top laner for jungler here. Positive for WE. But Doggo can still make damage happen. He's on this Lucian. He does huge work if he's just given a couple of moments of space. Is the Hextech Dragon peppering away at WE? Yeah, they're trying to start it. They're trying to get it done. 
And BLG are just keeping poking them down. The dragon as well doing that AOE damage. Been going for a flank. There's no smite. There's no smite on the side of BLG. They have to fight this one as Icon goes in, but it's two for Shing. They're looking for more bin in the pit, but it's smited and taken down. Shing chases Crisp out of the play. And WE are finding this game. The confidence from Shing, the person who's given them so much hope in the recent series. He dashes forwards and he takes out Doggo. And now the gold is even after the, the advantages BLG had for so much of this game. The soul is denied. And with the 7 on 1 of Felios, I think the scaling is well and truly hit it, uh, kicked in. Yeah, just about. The Shing, such a good way of playing this fight and kind of a hard one to strike. Honestly, the fact that BLG are so tentative, though. With Drake up, when you have no jungler, like you have to be more aggressive than this. I think they're just struggling to find a way into the fight. Like it's so hard for Doggo to do anything. And here, Shing actually goes down, but the bailout comes through and saves him. Yeah, I, I think PLG. I am struggling to see the angle right now. Bin has gone for like a full glass cannon one shot Renekton build, but like you saw how much like. The thing is, right, Fuhrer at this point in the game is going to do as much damage as the Renekton, but is also bulky. Whereas this Renekton has gone Glass Cannon and, uh, yeah, really going to struggle. Realm Up doesn't get followed through on, but it's Baron of 45. And, I mean, look at Shane with that shield coming through. He is such a problem. Oh, he absolutely is. It's, uh, <laughs> he's going to be so difficult to kill. Even if you get through the shield and his health bar, he then has a bailout. So you have to also survive all of that. It's... Uh, it's a tough one for BLG. Gold literally even or ever so slightly ahead even for WE and BLG. Now dire straits. They want to get every single win they can on the board. And remember, them making it to playoffs matters in terms of game difference too. This isn't just about winning the series for BLG. This is about winning 2-0. So now pushed really to the edge. And once again, this is not the style of play that we're used to seeing from BLG. And it feels like they may have underestimated WE coming into game two. It feels like a struggle. And as you said, I can't emphasize enough how much just one game loss would hurt BLG. Oh, but the oh, demon's on the flank. Demon getting onto Crisp here. Big damage coming out from him. The bubble does land though. Culling does nothing. Demon's still basically full HP off the back of the Culling. Chasing for more. Went too deep though. Bailout will not save him. One for one here. But Bin caught out by Shanks on the top side of the play. Has to blast going out to safety. This lethality Renekton does no damage when he can't get into the play. And now Realm up in the Baron. Weiwei's nowhere near. This is gone. This is gone. Oh, look how fast it goes down from the side of WE. And there we go. Baron in their pocket. And BLG against the ropes here. WE want to make an upset happen. Could this be the series where WE actually get their first win on the board? It would be monumental for them. Yeah, and you see Demon here. I mean, Chris was trying to wait out the repost and does, but then he dashes through the wave. Bubble connects, but it's not enough. They continue the chase when the bailout also gives the extra movement speed. And Demon does end up going down. Uh, but at the end of the day, you do so much damage to the jungler. You force them away. You get the Baron. And now a 2,000 goldie for WE. We do see Dragon up in a minute and a half, but they have the Baron. They can really start to push in these waves and apply some pressure. But WE starts stacking up these dragons. It just gets even worse, right? Extra ability haste on a Fiora. Making that repost cooldown so short is going to be such a pain. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's going to be brutal, honestly. And realistically, when you look at the comp from WE as well, like, if they just play 1-3-1, one, one, it's pretty much impossible for BLG to, to match those side lanes, right? Then you've got to see BLG try and make some play. But also, if you're playing for side lanes like that with WE... Realm Warp just increases in value. You can make so many different plays to try and control the map. BLG need a miracle. They need a huge mistake from WE to be able to come back in this game. Oh, man. But Orcs, we've seen that before. Yeah, Shanks just got a rabbit on, so... Uh, that's rough. You know, we also have... Icon has his rabbit on, but it's an item lead in the mid lane. Obviously, uh, Rai is going to be a problem. Level 18 already. Farming up a storm. I think BLG need to pick, but the problem is WE are playing it so well. They're grouping together as a four and not letting that opportunity arise. And the thing is, if you try and go for a pick and the bailout comes in and they trade it, then, you know, you don't actually have a pick. Yeah, tough 
one bin, trying to clear some vision on the top side of the play. Weiwei's going in, Shing the target here. He has a GA though, but Weiwei just doesn't have the damage. In the meantime, View keeping everyone at bay. Demon is TP'd in, Shing into bailout. Doesn't even need his GA. Just takes them down instead. WE against all odds so late in the season are looking for a game win here. An upset against BLG. Been alone and suddenly surrounded. Uses a stopwatch, but he'll go down. And the disrespect in the draft from BLG will be punished. Shing, yet another kill. I'm pretty sure that's double digits at this point. Eight, one, and seven. A beautiful win here for WE. And as I said, when we came out of the draft, Joe, you make a mistake with this comp and you don't get a second opportunity. Yes, they had the early lead. Yes, they got the advantage. But BLG messed up and WE were in a prime position to pounce and punish. Absolutely incredible stuff here from WE managing to get themselves a win and playing to make sure that they don't get picked apart as well. Beautifully done. And on the side of, the, on the side of BLG... Uh, I don't know what to say, lads. Like, you needed every single game you could get. I don't know why they drafted the way that they drafted. I don't know why they're playing a way that they haven't played all split. Like, game number one looked really good. Game number two felt kind of arrogant. Yeah, the, the problem is now, off the back of this, even if BLG go on to win the series, if FPX uh, win their series 2-0 or 2-1, they have a better game difference than you, so they will remain ahead of you. Uh, you basically, if BLG want to overtake FPX, they have to hope that BLG, uh, sorry, that FPX lose against WE, uh, which obviously not many teams lose against WE. So even though BLG still have the opportunity to come back and win the series, that game loss has devastating impacts on their chances of making playoffs. We said every single individual game counted, and it really does. So not one you can really afford to throw away, but I have to say WE were there to pounce, to punish. Demon in particular on the Fiora, even finding, and I know it was a dive from Bin, but finding the solo kill opportunity in lane and then just being this monster in the late stages. After how hard it was early on as well, Demon keeping his cool and having that massive impact across the course of the game. Shing and Kadaya too, weathering the storm in the early game. Dog on Crisp not able to have the impact that they wanted with this aggressive lane. And consistently we saw Icon trying to jump in and poke people but just couldn't really get any of it stick couldn't find his targets felt like across the board honestly WE kind of about classic blg in this one yeah i mean and that's the thing it's like there was a dive early from we which blg answered that looks positive but like it really just started to get messy and i just think if you have this exact same game but instead of having like renekton top lucian nami in the bot lane you had like a scaling bot you know maybe something like a jinx and then in the top lane perhaps you had like a matchup like camille or something that we know bing can play that at least like is more relevant in the late stages not like a full glass kind of renekton i feel like blg possibly could have just ended up winning this one with the lead that they had like i don't think the lead they had was dependent on the champions they picked apart from like the mid and jungle like the vi and the leblanc were obviously a big contributor but yeah they just went for this full like stomp lane end game comp and they managed to flub it so back to the drawing board uh but we you know as much as they have won yeah. games before they've won six games before today i feel like whenever they do end up in this position it's always like could this be it could this be the moment they get that first series win well, that's going to be the big question. We're going to jump into a break and find out if WE will finally get a win on the board right after, or if BLG will keep their playoff hopes alive. Because honestly, if they lose this one, I think they might be done so. We'll find